get us in rhythm. We got to settle down on offense. Or we got out of rhythm from the very first play. So we just got to settle down. All right, go back and now make plays. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Ironically, Tim, settle down. You said it a minute ago. Brent <laughs> Key sees the same thing, right? But sometimes it's just getting the quarterback run going to settle a quarterback down, and it happened. Yep. So the Jackets are going to have the football. Second down as we start this second quarter, trailing 14 to nothing. Don't forget, only one NBA game on the ESPN schedule, and it follows us tonight. West Coast primetime matchup. Jordan Poole returns to the Bay Area as a member of the Washington Wizards. They'll meet Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Beth Bowens leads our coverage at 10 o'clock tonight Eastern on ESPN. And, of course, always available on the ESPN app. So Georgia Tech sees UCF with 184 yards, averaging almost 10 yards a play, Tim. Jackets have had 61 yards, averaging less than five a play in the opening period. Second quarter, Georgia Tech scored 32% of their points this year in quarter two. Dante Smith stays in the pistol with Haynes King. And they'll hand it to Smith. Trying to find a crease, now going to reroute back here to the near side. Smith trying to break free, cannot. He'll be taken down back at the 19-yard line. Terrific run pursuit to Corey and Patterson. And a loss of two. You see the speed that UCF has. We've seen it on offense, but good pursuit and speed. and Good job at the point of attack as well to kind of bottle up the run. Now, I think King's got to be careful here, right? I said it before this drive. Come away with points on the drive. Third and seven, be smart. Singleton in motion. Here's King to throw, and he overthrows Dante Smith. So now on fourth down, Aiden Burr is going to come out and try the field goal. Morris Brash, by the way, was in King's face here. Yeah, Morris Brash is a free runner, and so the hot throw is to Smith. And I think as he kind of turns to look for the football, it kind of slows himself down. Which is part of the reason King overshot him. 36-yard try for eight Burr, who on the year was 14 of 16. And Burr shoots it right through. Georgia Tech on the find and Kobe Hudson for the score. Yep. Touchdowns to Baker and to Hudson for John Rice Plumley. Who in the ball game is five for five and 97 yards. And two scores, of course. There's Harvey flexing back to the left hip of his quarterback. And Baker the catch on the perimeter, and Miles Sims wrapped him right up. Sims, pretty big corner for Brent Key's defense. He's 6'3, almost 200 pounds. Started his college career at Michigan out of Atlanta Westlake and then transferred back to his hometown. Four catches 76 yards by the way in the ball game for Baker. Second down. Plumley this is Harvey and Mawala got him on the shoe tops and drops him back at the 30. And Mawala you know, we've seen and he, he does a good job in the middle. That's a nice play against a shifty player out in space. Feels like a big play in this first half for Georgia Tech. Plumley under duress and caught Hudson in stride into the secondary and across midfield to the 40-yard line of Georgia Tech before Jalen King makes the stop on Kobe Hudson, who was a blur. And I don't think that Georgia Tech was ready for kind of the fastball that they were getting from UCF. They weren't even lined up. I'm not sure they had a defensive call in. Here's Plumley to his right. Mawali gives chase, and he'll throw again to Hudson, who makes a catch, and we got a flag down across the way from where the ball was snapped. You go back to play before, that's what I mean about I don't think guys were originally lined up. What led to Hudson being so open. And we may have had an ineligible here. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, yeah. first down. Amari Kite, the Alabama transfer, right tackle, wanted to get in the pass pattern. Yeah, it's it's his own read. Plumley keeps it, but then as he gets pursued, he realizes he wants to get rid of the football, and 
you gotta love it when the big fellas are downfield yeah and then they see the ball thrown and then they try to get as small as possible <laughs> and like inch back it's like dude you're six seven three thirty like we see you down the field <laughs> first and 15 out of the penalty Plumley, quick shot that's a terrific catch by baker with sims knocking him right out of bounds tim we hit the number on the uh guys on the perimeter <laughs> hudson and baker have been terrific in this first half they're both really talented guys they're both highly recruited guys coming out of high school they've ended up here in gus malzahn's offense and he does a good job of getting them open and then they deliver there's Plumley from the pocket looping and there's his first miss of the night I think In incomplete ball on a touchdown throw for Javon Baker Sims was there Jalen Kingworth there for Georgia Tech a little slant and go tries to get him on inside and then split Sims and King and then not able to drop it in there under a little pressure was Plumley. as you see here Kind of as he's finishing his throw, the edge pressure getting to him. Plumley's first miss on 134 yards, and the injured player for Georgia Tech, I think, is Eddie Kelly, the defensive end from Orlando, who actually began his college career playing in this stadium for South Florida. USF, of course, who was a big winner last night in Boca over Syracuse. And Eddie Kelly will make his way off the field. But Javon Baker, Kobe Hudson, we told you the numbers at the start here. The numbers tonight already 131 yards on seven catches and two scores. Well, we said coming into the night, 85 catches and 13 touchdowns. So here we are, seven catches between the two of them, two scores. We're not even to halftime yet. So you can have a really explosive offense when you've got talent on the perimeter at wide receiver. Yep. They have it. Combine it with a quarterback that's versatile and a really talented running back at Harvey. It's a pretty nice formula. Third down again. Seven to go for the Knights. That's Pittman, the tight end, in motion out on the perimeter. Now Plumley escapes to his right. Looking, trying to get to the first down number and will dive out of bounds, but I think he's short by a yard or two. They're going to mark him a yard shy at the 31, but wouldn't be surprised if Malzahn went for this. I'm just going to say this. At this time, a guy's, you know, opting out of things. Go get it, John Rice Palm League. Yeah. You know, just go out and compete. That right there is an outstanding effort. Gives him a chance here to go for it on fourth down. R.J. Harvey in the backfield with him. They're 12 of 20 on fourth down during the regular season. And Plumley keeps it straight ahead. What a great play draw, Tim. They fake the toss to Harvey. They had to sweep through, and then Plumley keeps it and rolls inside the 15 for the first down. Yeah, I'm going to run a quarterback power here is basically what we're doing off of the action. And then that is your quarterback running through a tackle of Kyle Efert. So, I, look, that, that two-play sequence there, John Rice Plumley, is pretty impressive. Yep, Johnny Richardson in motion. Plumley on first down now. Being pressured, he will throw incomplete toward the tight end, Alec Holler. Kevin Harris was the guy peeling off the edge for Georgia Tech. Harris is playing a lot tonight. Kyle Kennard hopped into the portal at the end of the regular season. He was one of only two guys for Georgia Tech who opted into the portal. The other a reserve defensive back. And so Kevin Harris, who came over from Alabama, an Atlanta product out of Grayson High School, is seeing a lot more run tonight for Kevin Shear's defense. And now UCF's going to use its second timeout of the first half with this two touchdown lead and a second down play coming up. Tim, the thing that catches your eye about UCF is when you look at their Big 12 rank. The run pass offense that. Uh, you know, the quarterback is making decisions, which is why they're really rarely running into bad looks. By the way, the Knights on third down and five here. And we had a little he said, she said go on between the right guard and the uh, 
defensive lineman lock it. And you can imagine where each team stands on the guilty version here. It looked like that Paole, who's at the right guard spot, reached out and hit Lockett after he thought Lockett moved. Offside, defense, number 55, five yard penalty, results in the first down. Here it is, just watch. So Lockett, okay, there's that. And then Paole just, okay, I'll touch you, and therefore they'll throw the flag on you for doing that. And you're never quite sure it's going to finally fall that way, Tim, but you feel good about it. <laughs> when it does? Yeah. Tenth play, first and ten. Inside the 15, Plumley, quick throw, and Townsend trying to make a move, and the Jackets rally to the football. Kevin Harris, the defensive end, got out there in space. So did Kali for the linebacker. There's Mawala. Paul Mawala is playing in this game after declaring for the NFL draft, but wanted to finish the season with his team. I think more often than not, those are the right decisions. And I think that you know, obviously depending on your rating and your projection, yep. most teams like to have the ability to watch it one more time. Second down, eight after a gain of two. Plumley pumps, looks, now in trouble. Back to his left he goes with blockers. And he'll be brought down around the 10-yard line. Harris led the tackle charge with Eford for Georgia Tech. And I think there was a bust here because Whittemore, the tight end, he's just going to run free. See the top of the screen. I don't think it got passed off correctly. And because of that, Georgia Tech's fortunate that However, Plumlee was reading it all out, right. wasn't able to see him. Yeah, Trent Whittemore, you're talking about only three catches on the year. Probably not designed to go to him as the primary. Hudson in motion, Plumlee looks right, shoots it in zone. Hudson there, stripped out, incomplete. Amari Harvey, who really kind of took a beating early in the ball game, in the throw game. Strips it out of Kobe Hudson here. That's exactly what I was thinking because Hudson gets inside. Ball's well thrown in the hands of Hudson. But just a nice job of raking the football out by Harvey. So Boomer will come on to try the field goal for UCF. And this will be right at 27 yards. And the kick by Boomer is good. It's back to a two touchdown lead for UCF. And the Sun Belt in Montgomery at the Camellia Bowl. And then on the blue turf at Boise. It's a terrific trip. Georgia State and Utah State. Then we'll go to the 68 Ventures Bowl in Mobile tomorrow night. South Alabama, the home team there against Eastern Michigan. And then Coastal Carolina, San Jose State tomorrow night in Hawaii. Hawaii. Tampa tonight, and here is Leary to take the boomer kick at the five. Christian, 20, 25, and out to the 26-yard line. Downstairs to Taylor Tannebaum. Yeah, guys, when I talked to Haynes King this week, I said, what did you learn in year one at Georgia Tech? He said, just to be in the moment. He said, sometimes in football, you can get caught up thinking about the future and the what could have been. But this year, he's made a more concerted effort to stay in the now, play one play at a time, one game at a time. That has given him more clarity. And, guys, he's going to need to channel that mindset as they try to now dig themselves out of this 14-point hole. Played for his dad at Longview High School in Texas. Of course, a journey from Texas A&M that started his career. Here's King looking for Singleton. First catch of the night for the freshman All-America, Eric Singleton now. DeCorian Patterson makes a stop, but that's a throw of eight. It took a while, but 13's finally announced his presence here tonight. And they need to get him the football. He's their most dynamic offensive player, and, you know, they usually do a very good job of just getting him guaranteed touches. Here's a throw. This is Dylan Leonard, the tight end. Uh-oh. Dropped the hammer, and here goes number two for Georgia Tech. Nakai Martinez won't like the film on this. Dylan Leonard's a big man at 6'5", 240, just catches this ball in the flat. A lot of times low man wins, but Leonard does a good job of staying on his feet, 
continuing down the field. Here goes Haynes. Now the run game opens a valve for Jamal Haynes. Eight, almost nine on first down for the converted wide receiver, Tim. You mentioned a converted wide receiver. Sometimes I remind myself of that when I see how physical he is between the tackles. So second down and one. Inside UCF's 30-yard line, the 28 of the Knights now for Georgia Tech. Feels like Brent Key's team, in order to kind of stay within reach here, needs points. UCF has been so very impressive offensively, and for that matter, defensively. And what do we have now? Timeout asked for. I think the Jackets might have burned there first. Chris Winkie. Has the offense on the field from the call. Buster Faulkner, the offensive coordinator, is upstairs. Winky is the quarterback's coach. And, of course, Brent Key, the man in charge of his alma mater. Well, Georgia Tech started on a Friday night, ironically, at home in Atlanta playing Louisville at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this year. They ended up 6-6. Six and six. They had some unbelievable wins and some head scratching losses, but just kept grinding, didn't they, Tim? Yeah, I think they hung in there, and I think kind of goes back to a little bit of what Taylor was just saying about Haynes King of kind of being in the moment. You know, some devastating losses that could, you know, turn one loss into another loss the very next week, but we've seen some good responses after some disappointing losses from Georgia Tech throughout the season. said it better myself so four minutes after the boomer field goal Georgia Tech's best offensive drive of the night and Haynes King the touchdown run seven plays 74 yards and Burr to make it a touchdown difference Right? Sugar oh. Bowl gets the Purple Dogs of the Northwest. Huh? I feel like Hacho's always gunned up. I know gunned Hacho's up. gunned up, yeah, but I mean, you know, Longhorns back at the Sugar Bowl building where they beat Georgia a few years ago. Sam Ellinger that night. And no return here for Townsend and UCF. But, boy, John Rice Plumley has delivered tonight. Got off to a great start. Excellent throw to Baker for the first score, and then puts together a 99-yard drive by, excuse me, 98-yard drive by getting off of his own end line by delivering a nice throw down the field. Been really impressed by him. Now, saying all of that, Wes, it's felt pretty one-sided at times with UCF, but just a 17-10 football game. Yep. 4:23 to go. One timeout for the Knights, two for Georgia Tech. And on first down, Plumley wants to throw here. Pocket around him, pushed out to his right, and he's going to throw it in the bench area. Does Plumley did cross the line of scrimmage. He's one of his last five after hitting his first nine. You saw big Micaiah Scott close the angle on Plumley for Georgia Tech. I think it was a good decision by Plumley. He had a Deep crossing route by Xavier Townsend, and the backside corner fell off of it. Probably had a chance for an interception had he pulled the trigger. Second in the full 10. Fake the throw, now wants to run, and then threw it out of bounds and threw it over the head of Richardson, who was the intended receiver. Heck of a catch by one of the GAs over there on the bench. I think he was looking for a little wide receiver perimeter screen. Don't know why he didn't throw it right away. Should have been. You're not kidding. Got some hands over there. Yeah. Now, listen, got to be careful. Third and ten. Look at time on the clock here. Right. For as poorly as this started for Georgia Tech, got a real opportunity. Richards in the backfield. UCF's offensive line trying to sort out what Georgia Tech's doing. You see Pittman, the tight end, flexes out. Plumley from the pocket, middle of the field, incomplete. Baker was 
over the top and it looked like Townsend was kind of underneath him. That's exactly right. It's almost like a two man coverage underneath coverage trail technique on an in breaking route. A little bit of pressure too and because of that really nowhere to go with the football. And I thought Baker kind of gave up on the route not expecting the ball to come his way. Now West with four minutes down seven. Yeah. Then you talk about getting the ball to start the second half. Georgia Tech has found themselves in a really fascinating situation at the end of the first half here. Dominic Blaylock's season-long battle against injuries has him out of the lineup tonight. So Rodney Shelley takes the first punt of the night from Mitch McCarthy. Shelley makes a move at the 28, and whoa, look out. Tackled in traffic around the 33-yard line. 47-yard punt, a return of five. So now with 3.55 to go, Georgia Tech a couple of timeouts. UCF with one to go. And now all of a sudden you see what was once a 14-0 lead. And then 17-3, Tim. Georgia Tech's going to have a chance to maybe close this half and perhaps tie the game. Hey, 14-0 in driving the football. But it was the turnover caused you know by great hustle from Horace Lockett to knock the football out yeah and the play remember Amari Harvey raked out look at Georgia Tech here Haynes King wants to get it to Dante Smith with blockers and Smith squeezes through to the 38 that'll be a pickup of right at five Walter Yates the third fifth year senior from Gulf Breeze makes the stop and if Yates doesn't get there on that shoestring tackle Smith might be off to the races. So the Jackets with 20 on the play clock. Haynes King, the long look. Georgia Tech, like others at the collegiate level, signals in. Buster Faulkner on the headset to those guys. Here are the Jackets again, trying to spread out UCF. There's Smith in motion. Haynes King's going to keep it. Ride is his block across the 40 toward the 42. It'll be third about a yard here. Clock inside three minutes now. And you see the tangle at the bottom of the stack as King is back up. Well, we've seen him take some unbelievable shots this year, though, Tim. We, we have. Ooh. You know, it isn't always on design runs. You know, we've seen a couple times now on some of these third and manageables out of the power read run game out of the quarterback. Would not be surprised if they get back to it once again. Going to hand it to Dante Smith. First down, Smith a spin. Falls forward out to the 48. First and 10, Georgia Tech. Martinez, the tackle for UCF. Georgia Tech now, I think as they get to midfield, picked up that first down. We get close to two minutes. Now I do think some of the tempo, I get they have two timeouts, but some of the tempo now needs to pick up on this drive. A lot of speed here on the wide side of the field. Rutherford, Leary, and Singleton. Very explosive here to the open side. Pistol set for King. That's Rutherford in motion. Quick handoff. This is Dante Smith trying to find a crease. And he'll get to the 44. That's a run of about eight. Clock winding, 143 to go. Johnson and Henderson to stop for the Knights. Second and short here. A little surprised they haven't taken a shot yet. I'm, su I'm surprised just at the pace. I'm fine running the football, but the pace while running the football. King. Hands inside. Smith had it. Did he get enough for the first down? It's a question. I think he did. And that will stop the clock at the 41 with 118 to play. And I think while they do that and it stopped, like, go ahead, get your substitution and get a play called. Because now time, you're still outside the 40-yard line, time's still a factor here. Yep. Two timeouts left for Georgia Tech, one for UCF. Play fake. Here's King looking to throw. Coming back here to the near side. He's looking for Rutherford. Caught. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. It 
is a great call after running the football a couple times by Buster Faulkner. And then an outstanding throw by Haynes King on an inside post to get to the near pylon. Eight Burr to tie the game with less than a minute to go in the first. And the kick is good. Basically, they're going to run kind of a double post look with a deep cross. And it's this inside ball that Haynes King goes to. It's the first inside post that you read. And when he crosses the safety's face, if the backside corner chases, which he does, you throw it out there and let him run underneath it. That's really well done off of the play action. And I would say this too. Haynes King had run the ball a couple times in that drive. That's also difficult to be a good, accurate passer after you've been a design runner. And it is wild after the way this game started and looked at times that we are knotted up at 17. 67 yards in six plays, 259. Brent Key's team locked up now with UCF at 17 all. So Gavin Stewart will kick it away. Trying to keep it away from Townsend, and Townsend will slip on the 